Hi guys, today we're going to be changing out two different styles of tub spout, a half inch threaded iron pipe size style and a half inch copper slip on style. Let's get started. Some reasons that you might be replacing your tub spout are that it's worn out and damaged or the most common reasons is that it leaks or when you pull the diverter the water comes out from both the shower head and the tub spout at the same time. To determine if your model of tub spout is a threaded or slip on style, look underneath the spout near the shower wall. If there's no set screw, it is a threaded model, and if there is a set screw, it's a slip on. This will let you know which model you'll need to purchase for your replacement. This is a universal tub spout which allows the connection of both threaded and slip on with the use of included fittings. This longer plastic fitting allows the connection of a 3 quarter inch male threaded stub out. The 3 quarter inch by half inch bushing allows for the connection of a half inch male threaded stub out and the slip on adapter allows for the connection of a half inch copper stub out from the shower wall. I'm not going to be using any of the included plastic fittings and I'll be using a half inch threaded brass nipple. This is just a personal preference but I find it makes a stronger connection to the rough in plumbing. I'm starting with the threaded tub spout. To protect the finish a rag can be placed first around the spout. Using a pair of adjustable pliers, spin counterclockwise to loosen. A rubber strap wrench can be used as well to protect the finish, but to be honest, protecting the finish will be more important on the new spout than on this extremely deteriorated one. To get a proper seal, clean up the threads from any corrosion and Teflon tape. I'm using an old copper fitting brush. This is a 3 quarter inch by half inch brass coupling. It is more common to have a half inch stub out and this 3 quarter inch by half inch coupling wouldn't be needed. I'm quickly checking the length of brass nipple that is required to make the connection. This is a 3 and a half inch one and it is too long and leaving roughly a 3 quarter inch gap. A 3 inch one should do. Your tub spout may have instructions as well showing how far the stub out should be protruding past the shower wall. Now to tighten everything in place. Apply Teflon tape to the threads in a clockwise direction. I personally use a small amount of joint compound or pipe dope to the threaded connections as well. Check to make sure that the diverter is working properly and sending water to the shower head. Also check for leaks at the back of the spout while the water is running. The diverter should disengage when the water is turned off. A tip to prolong the life of the diverter is to never disengage the diverter when the water is running. There's a rubber washer in the diverter which diverts the water from the tub spout to the shower head. If you continue to disengage the diverter, when the water is running, this will wear out the washer and eventually cause the water to come out both the tub spout and the shower head at the same time when the diverter is engaged. So long story short, if you want to switch from the shower head to the tub spout, turn the water off first. Now that we've determined there's no leaks, it's a good idea to silicone the gap between the tub spout and the shower wall. 
only silicone the top side and not underneath. By leaving a gap underneath, it will let you know if there's ever a leak at one of the connections. Next is the slip-on style tub spout. These are easier to replace and have more room for adjustment than the threaded style. They use an o-ring to seal the water around the half inch copper stub out. And to hold the spout in place, it uses a set screw that tightens down on the copper. To remove the old tub spout, first loosen off the set screw. This set screw uses a 532nd Allen key. Once the set screw is loosened, the tub spout should slide straight off. One of the most important factors for a slip-on tub spout is that the outside edge of the copper stub out is as smooth as possible without any burrs, so that when you slide on the new tub spout, it doesn't damage the o-ring. This stub out is very rough, so I'm going to recut it, making sure that the length of the stub out from the wall still falls into spec after I cut it. Checking with the specs, a one and a quarter inch minimum, three inch maximum stub out is acceptable. So I'll be fine cutting off a small piece to remove the original rough cut. Most cutters leave a small outside burr on the copper. Remove this burr with some grit cloth or fine sandpaper to reduce the chance of damaging the o-ring. There's some rough corrosion on this copper as well that I'm smoothing out before installing the new spout. Careful not to remove too much material. Optional but recommended is adding a small amount of plumber's grease to the copper stub out and o-ring. Again, this will help reduce the chance of damaging the o-ring. Ensure the set screw is backed off far enough so it doesn't interfere with the copper. Slide the spout on as straight as possible into the very back of the shower wall. With the spout straight, tighten the set screw. I typically just snug the set screw, then tighten one quarter to a half of a turn max with the longer side of the Allen key. Don't over tighten. The set screw only holds the spout in place and doesn't seal against the water. Testing, checking for leaks, and siliconing the top side of the spout should be done as same as the threaded tub spout shown previously in the video. I'm not going to be siliconing this tub spout because this bathroom has plans to be renoed this spring. Well guys, hopefully you found the video informative and I'll tell you one thing, I don't think I've ever seen a tub spout roughed in this high before. We're talking about a foot and a half above the tub skirt, which typically you're going to install about three to four inches above the tub skirt. So I don't know what they're thinking. It's probably someone trying to get home early on a Friday afternoon or save a buck or two in copper. Anyways, thanks for watching and like always, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.